Hello, everyone. I'm Patty Pelica, editor in chief of JACE, and this is Author Spotlight for the month of October. It's my pleasure to be visiting today with Dr. Mark Sherrod, who is the senior and corresponding author of an interesting study about a novel way to unmask obstruction in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm the director of the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Program at NYU Langone and a professor of medicine at the NYU School of Medicine. Before I came to NYU, I was the director of the echocardiography laboratory at the Roosevelt Hospital, which is now on Mount Sinai West. So in my role as the director of the echo lab there, I saw the HCM patients as they came through, and patients and doctors would ask me how we should treat patients with HCM. And soon, before long, I had a, a practice of, of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in New York. And uh, there came a time when NYU asked me to assume leadership of, of their HCM program, and seemed like a good opportunity because I could continue my interest in echocardiography and and read the echoes uh, of the patients who came through our, our practice. So I, I first first want to mention um, Daniele Macera, who's the first author on this paper about unmasking obstruction. Daniele is um, is my, my colleague in the HCM program and uh, an accomplished echocardiographer himself. And I have to say that he did all the work on this paper. Um, and I, one can appreciate that, you know, with over 250 patients, uh, that this was a, a monumental effort on his part. Yeah, this is a wonderful study. It's really a, a novel way of thinking about stress echo and also about a novel approach of unmasking hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What led you to pursue this postprandial gradient? So first of all, over a third to a half of patients who have obstruction will come complaining that they have trouble uh, after eating a meal, that they can't walk and they have exercise intolerance. And so that's um, a clue. Um, and I guess that was graphically demonstrated to me once when a, a patient came to our HCM program, I, be I believe from Texas, and he was a strong and vigorous person and had barely any hypertrophy and certainly no outflow tract obstruction. And I, and I said to him, I'm sorry you came all the way because I, I just, we did a stress echo on you and you have no obstruction. Um, I, I'm not sure why your symptoms are so severe. And, and he said, Doc. he said, Doc, it only bothers me after I eat. You should stress me after I eat. I said, that's not part of our protocol. We, we stress people fasting. That's, that's the way all stress tests are done. Um, he said, doc, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see it unless you stress me after I eat. So we told him to bring a sandwich, a piece of fruit, and we exercised him uh, about a half hour after he ate that. And sure enough, uh, he, he developed LV gradients over 100 millimeters of mercury um, with um, severe symptoms that he had. There was a little clue that he was going to develop uh, at rest yeah. or, or with stress echo. So that, that was our index case. We then started to investigate the, the physiology of, of eating and, and what it does to the hemodynamics. And it was all uphill from there. That's a great story. Listen to the patient. Has this become part of your routine protocol now or asking about postprandial symptoms? Yes, we certainly include that in the, in the history. Um, and you know, if we have patients with HCM and they complain of that, we more or less know that they're going to be obstructed. Um, but importantly, the postprandial exercise echo is our standard pro provocative test. I mean, after we do the routine like Valsalva and standing, 
if we're going to order a stress echo, it's a postprandial stress echo. And we even have an order set in our electronic medical record, which we use at Epic. And, and the director of our echo lab in his wisdom has, has uh, instructed a um, computer change and we now have an order set. So you can order a, a conventional stress echo with exercise, or you can order a postprandial exercise echo. And for all of our HCM patients, we, we order a, a postprandial exercise exercise. Were you surprised about the frequency of obstruction after eating? Well, because of the frequency of the symptoms, I wasn't as surprised. And, you know, if you're an HCM doc, you have to you have to be a student of the disease and listen to the patients and realize uh, how sometimes difficult it is to provoke latent obstruction. So I was gratified that we have a way of provoking obstruction in patients who, whose symptoms would otherwise be mysterious. You say are more gratified than surprised. I would encourage all our readers to check out your paper. It's got your nice protocols and the, the frequency of um, provocation of obstruction with different maneuvers. Um, very helpful, I think. It also illustrates the versatility of echocardiography. You know, you can, it's one test that you can adapt to different situations and positions very nicely. Right. So 33% of the patients who presented with non obstructive HCM, who they were referred, were only unmasked by postprandial echocardiography. And of those, of the total group, 15% were unmasked only after exercise echo after eating. So eating is part of our standard echo protocol for HCM patients and certainly um, is a standard for our uh, exercise protocol as well. And I must say, we've had no side effects. No one has thrown up. No one has had... Um, aspiration. No one has had any problems. And, and, you know, eating is part of life and walking after eating is part of life. And so all we're do, doing is mimicking a, um, an activity of daily life. Thank you very much for visiting with me today and for publishing in Jace. Thank you for your interest in our work. We're very grateful.